Hello everyone, this is Jim Okrasinski with the week three lecture video. So in the lecture video this week, I um, believe I'm going to begin the conversation here in the announcements page, knowing that and just to review the schedule, that discussion board number five is due Friday end of day, along with the responses on um, Sunday. So I want to make everyone aware that discussion board number five is the uh, rhetorical analysis of the essay examples in the textbook. I believe that in this week's screencast video, I did discuss uh, the assignment, the discussion boards and the topics. Um, you're going to want to familiarize yourself with uh, the assignment uh, let's, and also the textbook before we get into the discussion about essay examples. So, after um, looking at what do I write about and the literacy narrative and how to structure this particular um, essay, um, read this and we're going to hit click on my, the appendix link here and it's a bookmark which will take you to the appendix in the back of the textbook. So I offer some thoughts about student examples. Okay. You know, over the years students ask for examples for essays assignments. There's no perfect example. Uh, sometimes a picture is worth a thousand words, so I hope that examples provide a visual reference on how to format a document and even a works cited page when required. Uh, that's for essay number three. So I offer some bullet pointed tips here to uh, help you review the example essays and I'll touch back on discussion board number five, go, out, go over the uh, the writing prompts there, and then we'll uh, wrap on this particular um, lecture video. All right, so the visual appearance of the document uh, for formatting, uh, MLA heading, line spacing, page numbers, right, is important. Will your essay, when you submit, look like uh, the essay in the example section here? Hey, okay, look at the introduction. If it needs a thesis, is there a thesis? Do you understand the main point of the essay? Oftentimes the introduction not only sets the stage, the five W's, but also it has to convey the main point of the essay. What is going to be, uh, the, what is the reader going to be facing for the rest of the essay, right? Pay close attention to the organizational structure, right? Like I talked about the chronological ordering for the literacy narrative in the um, proposal essay, essay number three, it's problem solution format in the proposal argument. Not going to cover too much about the uh, principles of citation here because this is a literacy narrative. So then the next question I ask is how does the writer close the essay? Is the conclusion thoughtful and leaves the reader with something to remember uh, about what's been said? So um, or does this simply just restate and regurgitate what was said already? Okay. So conclusions are something we'll focus on this semester also. So, so I say these are student examples and a resource for you to use in writing your essay. Okay. The examples do not take the place of the essay instructions, and that's critical. Always refer to the learning materials and essay instructions in writing your essay draft. So here I have two examples. One, um, like I said, look at the um, look at the visual representation of the document. All right. So uh, in reading the introduction here, this um, particular student wrote about poetry, and she sets the stage um, about. Um, her grandmother and how she uh, was introduced to poetry, right? She really does. You get the understanding of the who, what, where, when, and why um, in this opening two paragraphs. My suggestion would be that maybe these two would be combined, all right? But as she takes you on this journey about poetry and her grandmother, you can get in a sense and what an impact it made. Look at some of the sentences clearly, okay? A lot of descriptive detail and language used in this. Okay. She shares the lifetime of learning um, that her grandma opened up to her uh, about poetry, right? something that they shared. You can just tell by reading this particular narrative what it all uh, meant for her in that opening day when she was introduced to poetry and getting that book, right? So uh, she does kind of, kind of like talk about how, you know, her relationship went on until her grandma passed away and then how she got her grandmother's books. Now you can say, but Mr. O, this is really a life story. 
Well, it may be, but it takes you on a specific journey that's all connected, right? The connection is poetry, okay? How she uh, was, you know, her grandmother left her her poetry books. I believe it was 56 books that her grandmother left her. And then she connected between poetry and Instagram, which is a unique connection and many of us don't really look at how literacy ties to social media and the posts that we uh, all write today and how we live our lives. Actually, we live our lives in a public narrative, right? Whether it's Instagram or Facebook or any of the social media sites, everybody's comfortable with putting it out there nowadays. And I think this is an important aspect to uh, consider uh, another avenue that you may broaden your thinking about this particular uh, literacy narrative topic, right? So um, she talked about Instagram. I think believe this particular essay is a little longer, but nonetheless, she does talk about poetry and it does come back to poetry, right? So um, as you can see, here's a really excellent example of the literacy narrative, something that most people wouldn't consider uh, a topic of as being poetry. But remember, if it is something to do with literacy, we, we will certainly entertain and take a look at it, right? So uh, here's just my little look at one of the literacy narrative examples. And let me get to discussion board number five quickly. All right, so I then say, pick one of the examples and perform a mini rhetorical analysis, keeping the following in mind. So once again, how did the writer open the essay? Was it effective? And how did the writer answer the five W's? Look at the introduction. Did the writer focus on a specific literacy event or how did the writer narrow the timeline? Okay, or was the literacy more of a life story? And I think we all agree that this maybe was a little bit more of a life story, but since it was really kind of narrow in its focus um, on poetry and then converting over to social media, it all kind of worked. It was something a little bit different. Well, uh, and it was all connected. What I want to avoid is those disconnected life stories, right? So uh, how did the writer provide significant details and descriptions? I think the writer in this particular poetry example was very vivid in some of the language that she used and the way she described her experiences and was really pretty well detailed. Okay. And was the writer able to look back at past experience with fresh reflective lens, which I think came out through the whole essay about how she was looking back at what her uh, grandmother was able to uh, do for her, right? So um, this is uh, my uh, lecture video on one of the examples. You're free to choose whatever one that you uh, really think is um, appropriate. Uh, here's poetry. And this one is uh, literally literacy, right? So uh, both were a good example. Like I said, uh, most of them are are you know student examples but they give you an idea of how to go about your assignment for discussion board number five in the, the rhetorical analysis all right so uh let's get back to announcements uh, all right post is due um friday for discussion board five and then we move to responses on sunday and next week we begin drafting um i say one right if you have any questions um please uh, send me an email Thank you and good luck. Stay safe out there.